I once wrote a paper entitled The End of the Migration Epoch, question mark. And I was trying to raise the question of whether or not we were reaching a fundamental break with the past that we were going to need to accommodate in the, in the future. I actually, if I were rewriting the title, I'd say the end of welcome migration, because obviously migration is going on heavily now, but there's only very few places around the world where it's welcome. Most places are trying to figure out how to stop it and control it. There was an ancient hymn that had this phrase in it. New occasions teach new duties. Time makes ancient good uncouth. They must upward still and onward who would stay abreast of truth. And Lincoln spoke once of disenthralling ourselves with the ideas from the past, and, and that would give us the chance to save the nation. So I might mention a few of these paradigm shifts, I guess is the word we should use. One is the idea that there's room enough for the in, endless numbers of people, no matter how many, how, how large we run the human population. I think that idea is pretty well by the board, at least in certain quarters anyway. And that population problems and can be solved by moving people around the globe, kind of like moving people from one side of the Titanic to the other under the new view. Uh, another idea is that large scale migration can continue indefinitely. I think if we come to wrestle with it, we can say at some point this has got to stop. Maybe just like the growth of the number of cars, you can't go on adding 1% of it forever. It just run, r runs out of room. There's another idea that national boundaries are illegitimate. I think they're essential in today's world to try to solve some of these problems. We need inspection at national boundaries, for instance, to stop new invasive species from coming into the Great Lakes if we're going to have any sort of a Great Lakes fishery left. So national boundaries, far from being illegitimate, may have a lot of problems, but they need to be maintained. There's the old saying that we're a nation of immigrants. Well, that's true, but it doesn't help us answer the three basic questions of how many, who, and how. So that's a comforting statement. We need to get beyond this type of sloganeering. There's the idea that migration is basically a civil liberties problem, and it's, it's lodged, I grant you, in the judiciary committees on both the House and the Senate. And what we get is a lawyerly solution, the lawyerly solution being the second longest title in the U.S. Code with infinite capacities for <laughs> pettifogging and juggling. So we need to get away from looking at migration as a civil rights problem, looking at it more as a resource problem. Where's the oil? Where's the coal? Where's the natural gas? Where's the electricity going to come from? Those are the things that people are going to be concerned about. We also have a strong sociology-based tendency to focus on the person who migrates. One person comes from out of a thousand overseas, and we see that person here, and they think like a nice individual, and they're willing to learn the language and fit in, and they're doing some essential job, like taking care of my grass, my lawn, and my garden. And so we tend to have an anecdotal immigration policy based on the single immigrant. What we need is this bigger picture. We need the ecologist question of, and then what? So it's a story that has to be t told in its full, the fullness of its numbers. And then there's the idea that limiting immigration is selfish or worse. Well, limiting immigration may to be to the benefit of the home country. It may enable them to keep their best and brightest, to make changes for their future. How is Mexico going to get to the point where it learns how to deal with a dozen or 15 families that own most of the country if the people who don't like that pick up and leave? What would have happened if um, Nelson Mandela, when he got out of jail in South Africa, had just lit out for the new world? We need those people to stay behind, those people who've got a vision of a better world and a better future to help their countrymen achieve that. And I guess the last one I mentioned, this concept that's so popular today of diversity. I'm in favor of diversity to a certain limit, but the thing they need to have a functioning political unit is some commonalities. We need to agree on whether the rule of law is an essential thing. We need to agree on whether we want a theocracy or democracy. Or so diversity is fine, but we also make sure that we can understand each other. We need a common set of weights and measures. We need a common s size of a gallon. When you go into the gas station, you don't want to get a one size gallon in one station, another in another one. So these are the fundamental things that it's going to take to make a society functional and successful in the 21st century and beyond.